What if you could design some of your own holiday decorations this year? Everybody likes candy, so let's design a gingerbread man candy dish together in Fusion 360. This video series is aimed at beginners who may have a little to no experience in Fusion 360, and it'll show you how to make your own 3D printable gingerbread man candy dish. In this video, we're going to figure out the look and feel of our design and then get started on some basic sketching. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. The very first thing that I'm gonna do is collect some reference images. Um, to put my reference images in one place, I like to use this program right here called Pure Ref, which makes things a lot easier uh, for having all of your reference images right in front of you in a consolidated spot, easy to resize, um, and it's free to download. So uh, I'm gonna go over to Google and we are gonna look for some Gingerbread Man reference photos. So we'll go over to images. Um, and the cool thing about this Pure Ref app is so you can take just a photo like this, pick it up, drag it, and drop it right into Pure Ref. It might drop, ooh, oh, hold on. Oh, that did, that's not what we want. Hold on, let me go back to here. Let me see if I can find just the image. Uh, take that, drag it to Pure Ref. There we go. Um, so there, there's a little lesson learned. Um, you may sometimes have to click into the image, but I like the overall shape of that one. Um, and I'm just gonna grab a few more just so we can get uh, some different examples of different like decorative elements. And while we fast forward through this part, I wanted to take a quick moment to thank all of my wonderful Patreon supporters. It's because of your support that I am able to make these models and take the time to make these tutorials. And I think that should be okay for now. Let's go ahead and hop into Fusion 360. Um, and my, these reference images for now, I'm gonna drag them off to my other screen. Um, that way I can just kind of keep an eye on them. But we are in Fusion 360, we've got a new project started. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is get started on our first sketch. And we are gonna get the basic outline of the, the gingerbread. Um, now, kind of, overall leaning towards this overall body shape. Let me go back into Google really quick and I'm gonna save that image, that way we can pull it into Fusion 360. Here we go. So I wanna save this image, gingerbread man, and then this will allow us to pull it into Fusion 360 so we can get our shape started. So I'm gonna to go to insert and then insert canvas, and then we're gonna to go to insert from computer, reference images, gingerbread man. So it's gonna pull it in, or actually it's gonna ask you which plane you wanna pull it in on. So we're gonna select this ground plane and we can see that it's centered. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now the first thing we wanna do is calibrate our image and basically get it roughly the size of what we're creating is gonna be. So we're gonna go up to canvases and then right click and we're gonna to go to calibrate. And now we're gonna go back to our top view. I don't know why it dragged us out like that. And we're just gonna get approximate sizing. And I kind of want the overall thing to definitely fit on a build plate easily. So we're going to start off with like 150 millimeters long. So we'll go 150 and that blows that up to where like, you know, from the feet to the top of the head are about 150 millimeters. Um, and then we can continue our sketch and we're just going to kind of trace out half of this thing. So let's click, I'm going to hit L on my keyboard for line and I'm gonna get a line going through the center point. So without clicking, um, I'm just gonna have my, drag my mouse down to here, and then I'm gonna drag this up to the top of the head, and click okay. Now I'm gonna hit C for circle, and we'll go ahead and get this head shape figured out. So I'm just gonna click roughly where the center of the circle is, and we can move it here in a second, and get it roughly the right size, and then lift, left click, and then I'm gonna hit escape to get rid of the circle thing. And then I'm just gonna left click this. And if you drag the actual circle, it'll bring, make it bigger or smaller. But if we drag the center of the circle, that's what will relocate it. So it looks like we need to be a little bit smaller. Um, and actually that line, I don't want that line to be moving left and right. So I'm actually gonna take this line, see, fix it. That way that line can't move anymore. And then we're gonna take our circle. We're gonna drag this back up and that looks about good. I think we can be a little bit bigger. And I think that looks pretty good for the head. Um, now, if we look at the hand, this is also a circle. So let's go ahead and get a circle over there as well. So I'm gonna hit C for circle and we're just gonna do the same thing. Kind of get it, we're gonna eyeball it. 
press escape, and then we're going to drag this in place, make it a little bit bigger, I think. Move that more in place, and I think that looks okay. That's close enough. Um, and then we don't really have any other circles, so we're just going to kind of trace everything out um, the you know the the spline way. So we're going to go ahead and hit our fixed point spline, and then we're going to go ahead and just start tracing to fill in those gaps right around the outer edge of these red points. So that part is good. And then all we got to do is trace from here all the way around and then we'll mirror everything over to the other side. So we're going to, I'm going to start down here and we're just going to go ahead and start clicking. And if you're not that like well versed with these fixed point splines, the idea is that you want to have as few points as possible, but whenever you have parts that are curved like this foot or like, you know, any of the curved parts around this perimeter, you're obviously going to need more points and it just takes a little bit of practice working with these splines to kind of get things to, you know, cooperate. Uh, but with a little bit of practice, you can kind of get things traced out fairly quick. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to hit okay. Um, you can see we've got all these anchor points for our spline and I'm not going to go deep into splines on this video. But if I left click, then it'll show just the spline itself. And I'm going to start a new one. I often like to start a new spline when we hit corners like this. It just makes it easier to keep the corners nice and sharp. So I'm going to go back up to fit point spline. And then we're going to continue tracing. And I'm kind of ignoring these little bumps for now. Um, but I might come back and add those in here in a little bit. So now we're going to kind of trace around this area. See if we can keep things nice and straight and that looks okay. So I'm going to hit escape and then left click. And it looks like we've got our whole right perimeter done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do some trimming and then we'll mirror it over. We are going to go ahead and hit trim and then we're going to just trim the left side of this circle. That's not, that's too much. Um, let me see. We got to take this line. And just draw it up a little bit, I think, and then we can, it'll allow us to trim just the left side of that circle. Um, and the reason is that that line wasn't crossing, I guess. Um, but then we're going to trim the inside of this circle and this right here. And then I'm going to hit escape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this whole outer edge out here. And the quick way to do that um, is if you if you double click an edge, then it's going to select the entire edge. And there must be okay. There is a little discontinuity right here, so that actually pointed out an issue for us. So I'm going to hit trim. Will help us out. Okay, so there's that excess gone, and it looks like we are all one continuous path now. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So. Um, the issue that I was having was that where I finished that fit point spline, there was a little bit of an overlap. So I just needed to use the trim to trim those little bit of extras. So now when we double left click this whole edge, it selects the whole thing <clears throat> because it's one continuous edge. And while holding shift, I'm going to select the center edge because we don't want that one selected. And then I'm going to go up to mirror and it's already got all of our original edges. So for the mirror line, we're going to choose this center line and hit OK. And now we've got our shape. So let's hide our canvas. And there is the basic outline for our gingerbread man. And I think we're going to start off with this. And it, it looks a little bit of a mess right here. But if we go to uh, uncheck show dimensions and show constraints kind of helps um, see things a little bit better. But I think that looks OK for now. And that's the end of part one. In the next video, we will use that sketch to create the container and the lid. And then we will run a test print to make sure that everything fits together the way that we want it to. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you on the next one.